So, round of applause for Star vs. the Forces of Evil for only having the second worst series finale premiering on a Sunday. Uh, that title goes to Game of Thrones, which I don't know if, uh, as of this recording, if Jay's review has done his uh, review for series the series finale for uh, King Game of Thrones. Yeah, but I'm going to give my thoughts on Star vs. the Forces of Evil series, uh, series finale. And, oh boy, I've got some things to say, because this was this was bad this was just like this whole season has just been one garbage fire after another much like with game of thrones only star vs the force of evil doesn't you know doesn't get to say oh we didn't have an x amount of episodes and our budget was low no disney gave you enough budget and time you you work for the mouse you've got both it's been you know for me the show has been kind of um going down a steady steep slope since season two Season 3 started out strong, and then, woo, it went downhill fast. And then, you know, Season 4 has just been one, you know, mess after another. Like, they clear Darren Nefsey and everyone else, I don't know if it was corporate, or they just didn't have a, a, a proper idea on how to end this. It, season 4 has just been like, we don't know where the hell we're going anymore. We, we really don't. Now, let me say this, that if you were a fan of, of the final season of Star vs. the Force of Evil, and season and se and the series finale on a whole that's totally fine i'm not saying you're you know i'm not saying i'm not condemning you for liking it i'm just saying i didn't like it and it wasn't a strong ending because this show was the uh, you know was the successor to gravity falls and i just felt like it really fell flat but yeah hopefully ducktail ducktails hopefully doesn't fall into that pitfall come final season we've been doing really well with season two so i'm wondering of what we're going to do with season three and four Anywho, so the series finale pretty much states that, oh, Star's got to destroy ma all magic in order to keep M Amina from, you know, days of future pasting the entire kingdom of Muni, which made me, and even Moon says, the three of us together, you know, us plus Meteora, the four queens, could definitely do some damage to her and maybe even win. We have enough allies at this point to win right now. So, we could, in theory, win against Mina's army of giant robots. To which they're like, Star's like, nah, I got it, nah fam, I'm gonna destroy all magic. So, and also, I will say that the shining moment of this is that they finally are like, yeah, Starco is a thing, stop screaming about it, I'm glad Starco is finally a thing. I didn't like the road to get there because it was long, arduous, and nobody fucking wanted it, wanted it to be like this. It was kind, you know, the road it was, was long, arduous and painful. I'm just saying. Also, I, I also can understand that the Starco fans are probably in the same, like, are now happy, but now the, uh, the, the Ladybug shippers are kind of going through this right now in the recent episodes of, uh, Ladybug, you know, the Miraculous Ladybug. Just, if you, if you're watching the news of the third season and where it's progressing, yeah, you can probably understand what I'm, uh, what I mean by that. But, yeah. So, this show, like, the big, the main thing that bothered me the most with this uh, season, series finale is that I just felt like there was so much stuff left, like, it felt like it was meant to have a, a fifth season. It really feels like this show was building up to a fifth season because they do nothing with Ludo, you know, oh, you, you may be thinking, oh, but Ludo's story was totally done, then what was the point of him wanting to, re you know, face Star and Marco again? What was that all about in season three? Yeah. Um, did his story just end with him reuniting with all his family? Yeah, and they even hint that he wasn't done with Star and Marco yet. So, yeah, that was kind of another, the other thing was like, drop, you know, all the stuff, um, that they just briefly mention here and there with the other characters. Um, also glossing over the whole thing that, you know, humans and humans are, uh, you know, humans are a subspecies of humans. Um, and also, they don't go into full detail about Marco and how he's so effortlessly able to wield the wand. They don't go into that at all. Like, they mention, it's like, oh yeah, I can use the wand. Moving on. They never fully explain, also, they never explain the, uh, the moon cheeks. They never fully die, I mean, they mention it here and there, granted, but they never go into full detail about the, the, the moon cheeks. So... Yeah, that, so yeah, there was so much left unsaid. 
in here. There was so much left unsaid because it's very clear they maybe they wanted one more season. But Disney's on this whole thing of four seasons and you're out. And sometimes you just can't tell an entire season, in, you know, an entire story in four seasons. And yeah, they also leave Mina alive at the end of the season, at the end of the series, which Mina's basically become a white supremacist. Only she's, I guess you could say, munist. Uh, immune sepsis? I don't know. Basically, she's become an allegory for a white supremacist, and um, they leave her alive. Again, another indication that this was probably meant that they wanted one more season of Star vs. Um, but yeah. Um, I'll, I will say that I did like all the um, queens coming back for one more move. Uh, I did like that. I... I rather enjoyed how that played out. I'm rather glad that how that played out and seeing that. I also really enjoyed um, that brief little character moment between when Solaria, you know, more or less acknowledged Meteora as her daughter, as her granddaughter. I was like, oh, that's so adorable. And she's also like, you know, silently condemning, um, condemning Mina for all of the pain. And, you know, uh, yeah, I thought that was cool. Um, Mina was just not, you know, Mina was just a crazy, clear allegory for white, suprem for white supremacy, but, um, I kind of figured she was going to be a villain at some point, so I'm not shocked. The Magical High Commission, they don't know what they were doing with those characters, um, I was like, yeah, if you really wanted to make them out to be the villain, why did they have to be following Mina? Mina should have been the underling to them because they're basically gods, and Glosser was no goddamn help. Uh, as per fucking usual. So, you know, you got that going for us. Oh, but I will say that I did like how um, basically all of Echo Creek and I think all of California basically just merged with Muni. It fused with Muni and Star and Marco get to be together. Because I guarantee you that if Star and Marco didn't get together, ooh, there'd be like a, the Battle of Helm's Deep, a deep at, at, um... Um, Disney H Animation HQ. Like, there would just be a fury of Starco fans marching on D the Disney headquarters like the orcs in the Battle of Helm's Deep. That, you, I joke, but that's very much what could have happened. Like, it could have been that. And now you're just imagining Starco fans, like, scaling the walls and what have you. It'd be a lot more fulfilling and a lot more cool than, the, than you know, the Battle of King's Landing. I'm just, you know, just, just, uh, yeah. That's, you know, Battle of Helm's Deep. Still one of the best cinematic battles of all time, and I'm getting off course. Um, I, I don't know, like, again, if you were a fan of this season, and there were some good things in here, like, I liked Eclipse's storyline, I really dug Eclipse's storyline, but this isn't Eclipse versus the forces of evil, and it really started to feel like they wanted to make this more about Eclipse in this season. This is Star vs. the Force of Evil, not Eclipsa vs. the Force of Evil, and a lot of this stuff felt very haphazard, um, haphazardly made, and so many questions left unsaid, like Marco, you know, I know that humans and humans share a common bond, but that, you know, they kind of explain that Glosseric, um, helped change humans into humans, and Marco, unless they say that he was descended from them, that doesn't explain why he was so... Um, effortlessly, effortlessly able to use the wand, plus, you know, those, the, you know, the showing of the markings on his face. Yeah. So, again, if you did enjoy the Star vs. the Forces of Evil series finale, this is totally fine. I'm not gonna shit on you for it, but, like, wow. And when I was in, I was actually, like, in the shower at, because I was because uh, I was at Mega I was going to Megacon and it was the final day but we were um, we actually ran late so I could watch the series finale to Star vs the Forces of Evil just so I could be like okay let's gauge how this is gonna let's see if they stick the landing uh, fun fact they didn't um, and I was just sitting I was just standing in the shower like just g di mentally digesting all that I had seen and I was like that's how it ends really. So much left unsaid, and a lot of it just deus ex machinas out of here. What the great good fuck? <laughs> um, so yeah, I... I don't... what? Anyway, so... 
I will say that there were, like I said, there were some good things in here, like the battle scenes, uh, Star, Star and Marco literally feel like they're going to die for one another, and I was like, okay, that was really cool, and I'm glad they got a happy ending, um, in that capacity, so that's really cool, but, yeah, other than that, this just showed that season four was just kind of a mess of a season. But anyway, so you guys tell us in the comments below here at Comic Universe, what did you guys think of the Star vs. the Forces of Evil series finale? Did you guys like it? Hate it? Um, would you have wanted a se uh, fifth season? And were you happy with how it ended, despite everything? Just comment below, let us know. And if you're new here, remember to hit that subscribe button and be a part of Earth's Mightiest Subscribers. We're always, lo we're always happy for it, and we also would like to thank everyone, even though I'm pretty sure C-Dubs has thanked everyone here already, that for helping us get to 1,100 subs. And hopefully we can get to 1,100 more and beyond. So once again, if you're new here and you want to see some more nerd-centric content, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell for notifications. I'm DPZ, and we will see you right here once more in the universe.